Welcome, ladies and gentlemen, to House of the Scorpion, Chapter 14. Celia's Story Matt was inside his room when Maria left. He heard the hovercraft whine as it prepared to lift off. He heard the whoosh of air and felt an eerie stir on his skin in the as the anti-gravity vessel passed overhead. He had never traveled in one. El Patron discouraged such things, preferring to keep his farm close to the memory of his youth. As a boy, El Patron had observed the grand estate of the wealthy rancher who owned his village. He remembered a statue of a winged baby in a fountain tiled in blue and green. He remembered the peacocks that haunted the, gar haunted the garden. In every respect, he told Matt, he tried to duplicate that memory, only of course being vastly more wealthy, he could have dozens of statues, fountains, and gardens. The, Ale the Alecran Estancenia was laid out over a large area. No part of the house was taller than one story. The walls were brilliant white and the roofs were fine red tile. Modern conveniences were kept to a minimum except in special areas like the hospital. Thus Celia cooked over a wood-burning stove when El Patron was visiting because he liked the smell of burning mesquite. At other times she was allowed to use microwaves. The gardens were cooled with fine sprays of water and rooms, for the most part, depended on shaded verdants to tame the hot desert air. But during the annual birthday party, modern conveniences came out. The famous celebrities would have been miserable without their air conditioning and enter entertainment centers. Not that El Patron cared whether they were miserable, he merely wanted to impress people. Matt listened to the purr of El Patron's limousine. The old man preferred to travel by road. If it had been possible, he would have gone by horse, but his bones were far too brittle to attempt such a thing. He would sit in the back with Tamlin for company. Deaf Donald would drive. They would whisk along the long, shimmering driveway highway to El Patron's other house in the Chirichua Mountains. Matt stared up at the ceiling. He was too depressed to eat or watch TV. All he could do was play out the events of the past few days in his mind. He went over them again and again. Only if he, if only he hadn't put Tom at the baby table. If only he hadn't made Maria kiss him in front of the others. If only he hadn't gone to the hospital. The regrets piled thickly on one another until Matt's thoughts were running around like his, uh, running around his head like a hamster on a wheel. Everyone thought he'd poisoned Furball. His fingerprints were on the bottle, and he he'd left a note, a signed note. How dumb can you get in Maria's room? Matt had to admit the evidence against him was pretty good. Tom must have seen him come out of the pump house and decide to finish the job he'd started when he dumped Furball into the toilet. But how did Tom use the laudanum without leaving his fingerprints on the bottom? Round and round went Matt's thoughts. Squeak went the wheel in his mind. He heard the limousine start up, the distant slam of a door and the fading roar of an engine. El Patron was gone now. And Tamlin. Matt grieved for him. Any rat... Any rat in the sewer can lie, Tamlin had said. It's how rats are, but a human doesn't run around and hide in dark places because he's something more. Matt thought he could make Maria understand if he ever got to see her. She'd forgive him because she was a dumb, because he was a dumb, dumb animal and he didn't know any better. But Tamlin had called Matt a human and expected much more from him. Humans, Matt realized, were a lot harder to forgive. For the first time, he saw a huge difference between the way the bodyguard treating him treated him and how everyone else did. Tamlin talked about courage and loyalty. He left Matt to do dangerous things on their expeditions and go off by himself to explore. He treated Matt as an equal. Tamlin offered, often talked to, to him about his childhood in Scotland as though Matt were another adult. It wasn't like El Patron's memories, which tended to fall into a rut. Matt had their stories memorized right down to the last word. Tamlin's stories were about the different difficult decisions you made to become a man. I was a proper fool, the bodyguard had said. Turned my back on my family and ran with a rough crowd and did the things that brought me here. What was the thing Tamlin had ever revealed? At the mo at the memory of those pa picnics came to tear tears came to Matt's eyes and rolled down his cheeks. He made no sound. He had learned that safety lay in signless, but he couldn't stop the tears. Yet in the midst of his sorrow, Matt found a glimmer of hope. Someone, out of all the people who thought he was no better than a dog, believed he could be something more. And I will be, Matt promised as he stared up at the blurry ceiling. Not everything was depressing. Tom was banished from the house. Maria, when she was hunting for her dog, had innocently asked her father to look in the hospital. Senator Mendoza wanted to know what, how she knew about the place. The whole story came about McGregor's clone and Tom, Tom's part luring Maria to see it. El Patron banished Tom to a year-round boarding school with no holidays. 
Why don't... Why doesn't Mr. McGregor take him if Tom's his son, Matt asked. You don't understand, Celia said as she cut the cheesecake with fresh raspberries for dessert. Ordinarily, Matt would have demanded two slices. Now he didn't think he could choke down one. El Patron decided something belongs to him. He never lets it go. Never, said Matt. Never. Never. What about the presents he gets for his birthday? Matt thought of all the gold watches, jewels, statues, moon rocks people had given El Patron for over 100 years. He keeps it all. Where? Celia dished up the cheesecake and lick her licked her fingers. There's a secret storeroom underground. El Patron wants to be buried in it. May the Virgin keep that day away forever, Celia crossed herself. Like, Matt started thinking, like an Egyptian pharaoh. Exactly. Eat your cheesecake, Nivita. You need to keep your strength up. Matt ate mechanically as he imagined the storeroom. He'd seen pictures of King Tutankhamun's tomb. El Patron would lie in a golden box with all the watches, jewels, statues, and moon rocks around him. Then, because Matt didn't want to think of El Patron dying, he said, What does that have to do with Tom? Celia settled back in her easy chair. She was much more relaxed now that everyone had left. El Patron thinks a person belongs to him in the same way a house or, house or car or statue does, she said. He wouldn't let that person go any more than he'd throw, money, throw away money. It's why he wouldn't allow Felicia to escape. It's why he never freaking... It's why he keeps everyone under his control so that he can call them back in an instant. He never let McGregor have Tom, even though he can't stand the boy. Do you and Tamlin belong to El Patron, said Matt? Celia fringed. Caramba, the questions you ask. Matt waited. Maybe you wouldn't get into so much trouble if people explained things to you, she said with a sigh. I didn't po poison Furball. You didn't mean to, darling. I know your heart is good. Matt badly wanted to argue his case, but he knew that Celia wouldn't believe him. His fingerprints were on the laudanum bottle. I grew up in Aztalan, she began, in the same village where El Patron was born. It was poor then, and it's worse now. Nothing grew there except weeds, and they were so bitter that they made donkeys throw up. Even roaches, tick roaches hitchhiked to the next town. That's how bad it was. As a girl, I went to work in Maquiladora, a factory on the border. All day, I sat on an assembly line and put tiny squares into tiny holes with a pair of tweezers. I thought I'd go blind. We lived in a big gray building with windows so small you couldn't hear you put your head outside. That was to keep the girls from running away at night. Running away. At night, we climbed to the roof and locked the n looked across the north border. Our border, said Matt. Yes, the farms lie between Estelan and the United States. You couldn't see much because the farms are dark at night. But beyond, where the United States lay, was a great glow in the sky. We knew that under that glow was the most powerful place anyone had. Power was the most wonderful place. Everyone had his own house and garden. Everyone wore beautiful clothes and ate only the best food. No one worked for more than four hours a day. The rest of the time, people flew around in hovercrafts and went to parties. Is that true? asked Matt, who knows almost nothing about countries bordering the farms. I don't know, Celia said. I guess it's too good to be true. Matt helped Celia clear the dishes, and together they washed and dried. It reminded him of those days long ago when they lived in the little house in the poppy fields. Matt waited patiently for Celia to pick up the story again. He knew if he pushed her too hard, she'd stop talking about her past. I lived in that gray building forever, getting older and older. No parties, no boyfriends, no nothing. She said at last, after the dishes were put away. I hadn't heard from my family in years. Maybe they were all dead. I didn't know. The only change in my life happened after I learned to cook. I was taught by an old curandera, a healing woman who took care of the girls. She taught me all kinds of things. I was the best student she ever had, and soon I got off the assembly line and started cooking for the whole building. I had more freedom. Freedom. I went to markets to buy herbs and food. And one day I met a coyote. An animal? Matt was confused. No, darling. A man who takes people over the border. You pay him, and he hopes you go to the United States. Only first you have to cross the farms. Celia shivered. What an idiot I was. Those people don't help you go anywhere. They lead you straight to the farm patrol. I packed everything I owned, including the virgin I'd had brought from my village. About twenty of us crossed into the Ajo Mountains, and that's where the coyote abandoned us. We panicked like a bunch of scared rabbits. We tried to climb down a cliff. cliff. A woman fell into the, to a gorge and died. We abandoned most of our belongings so we could move faster, but I didn't do it. But it didn't do us any good. The farm patrol was waiting at the foot of the mountains. I was taken to a room and my backpack was dumped out. Be careful! I cried. Don't hurt the virgin. That's how she got the chip. 
That's how she got the chip in her robe when the patrol jumped her, dumped her on the floor. They laughed, and one of them was going to crush her with his foot when someone shouted, Stop! from the doorway. Everyone snapped to attention. You better believe it. It was El Patron in his wheelchair. He was stronger in those days, and he liked to check up on things personally. Your accent is familiar. Where are you from? he asked. I told him the name of my village, and he was very surprised. That's my hometown, he said. Don't tell me the old rat's nest is still there. It is, I said. Only the rats have moved to a better slum. He laughed, and I and he asked if I had any skills. From that moment on, I belonged to El Patron. I will always belong to him. He'll never let me go. Matt felt cold. It was good that Celia had crossed over the border, otherwise she wouldn't have been around to care for him. But there was something so bleak about her last words. He'll never let me go. I love you, Celia, said Matt impulsively, putting his arms around her. And I love you, she said softly, hugging him back. It felt so safe then. Matt wished he could hide in her apartment forever and forget about the Alacrans, the scornful servants, and McGregor's clone. What happened to the other people who crossed the border, he asked. Them. Celia's voice was flat and expressionless. They were all turned into idiots, and she refused to say any more about it. <clears throat> End of chapter 14. The next section is old age, 12 to 14. I hope you enjoyed. Remember to check out my Patreon, link in the description, and I will see, talk to you all in the next video.